Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to part two of my Obsidian Bases migration series. Today we're not just migrating, we're supercharging my Obsidian Knowledge Wiki Pro Vault. First I'll pull back the curtain on my own system engineer wiki to show you Obsidian Bases and data view in action. Then I'll guide you step by step through integrating this hybrid setup into your vault. Whether you're curious about switching from data view to bases or ready to build a powerful hybrid setup, you're in the right place. Join me as we explore how Obsidian Bases can fundamentally transform your wiki management. Quick disclaimer. At the time of this recording, Bases is only available to Obsidian Catalyst members who are running Obsidian version 1.9.0 or above. So unless you're tuning in from the future, you'll need at least a minimal 25 USD insider license to give Bases a try. My System Engineer Wiki Showcase. Here I am inside of my Obsidian Vault and over on the left hand side I have my Spaces folder. And if we expand the Spaces folder we can see that inside there I have a space for everything that I create inside of Obsidian. So this ranges from bases to my Excalibur drawings my canvas files to my YouTube channel, as well as my work system engineer wiki. So I'm going to focus on the system engineer wiki today. And this wiki is based on my Obsidian Knowledge Wiki Pro Vault on my Ko-Fi page. And it was created when I made the video, how I migrated my knowledge wiki from Notion to Obsidian. So to get to my system engineer wiki, I don't use the left pane navigation. What I have is a manage workspace layout. So if I come down and select my manage workspace layout system engineer wiki, that loads my system engineer wiki dashboard. And this is just all the sections that exist under my system engineer wiki folder. So we can see here I've got AWS, Home Lab, Intune, Linux, Microsoft Networking, Okta, PowerShell, Server Management, and Ticketing Systems. So each of these tiles here is a data view query. So if I wanted to go to AWS, then I just select the AWS button. And then that is my section for anything to do with AWS. I can go back to the system engineer wiki dashboard, go into Linux, go back, go into Okta, go back and go into PowerShell. So I've really got a nice little system for my work notes here. You'll notice up the top here, I've got a couple of buttons. So I've got a new button called System Wiki Base. So if we click on that one, that one goes to a new base for my System Engineer Wiki. And then inside there, I've got all my base views set up. And that's what we're going to go through in today's video. So we'll just head back and you can see I've got a search here as well. So if I click on search, then I can do a search for PowerShell scripts inside of this area. So if I know what I'm looking for, or I want to just use keywords, then I can just come in here and use a MetaBind input field, which sets YAML properties to display a data view query with the results. So what I'm going to go through today is just integrating my new base. So if we come open up the bases directory here, I've got a new base here called System Engineer Wiki, and I've got all the areas here for the system engineer wiki. So I want to integrate that into my vault. So I'm going to go through that now. So if we jump into one example, we'll choose PowerShell. Inside my PowerShell directory within the system engineer wiki, this is how it currently looks on the landing page. So I've got a little logo up the top with a button back to the system engineer wiki. I've got a button to create a new PowerShell script and a new button to link back to the system wiki base. I've then got my input field search here, which displays my results. So you can see I've got Teams here and that brings up all the PowerShell scripts related to Teams. And then underneath, I've got a data view query, which shows the full directory of all the PowerShell notes inside of this section. So if we have a look into the source code, we can see what that looks like there. So there's a lot going on in the back end of this note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this new base here. So you can see here I've got a new base set up that is showing the PowerShell scripts within this vault. So I'm going to keep my current data view search 
and full directory view until the Obsidian team add a search feature into bases. I just want to showcase what this looks like and then in the next section of the video we'll go through how to set it up. So you can see here I've got PowerShell scripts selected. If I come into my filter it's pulling in where any of the following are true. So tags contains PowerShell or from the file folder, which is spaces system engineer wiki PowerShell directory, which is the name over in my spaces PowerShell directory folder here under system engineer wiki. So anything that lives in here is being shown here. And if it doesn't live in there and it's got the tag PowerShell, then it will come in here as well. So we'll just hide the left pane and we'll go back to the dashboard now and we'll have a look at the others. And so we can see we've got one for AWS, one for Linux, Okta, one for networking, one for all my home lab, a base for Microsoft, server management, ticketing systems, Intune. So I haven't fully replaced State of View in my system engineer wiki. What I'm going to do in the next section of the video is we're going to add a knowledge wiki base. Then we're going to upgrade or migrate that new base into my knowledge wiki pro. So anyone that's already purchased this vault will be able to get access to this through their Ko-Fi. But for anyone else that's interested in adding bases alongside data view, feel free to follow along in the next part of the video as it may help you in your Obsidian vault how to set up your knowledge wiki hybrid base. So here we are back inside of Obsidian and we want to create a new base to use inside of our system engineer wiki. If you own the knowledge wiki pro vault, this will look very familiar. So the first thing we want to do is create a base for our system engineer wiki. So to do that, I'm going to expand the spaces folder here, and I'm also going to expand the system engineer wiki. So we want to create a base for this folder here, which gives us all the views for all our child folders. So usually in Obsidian to create a new base, you hit control P and type in the word base and you can select create new base. But this creates a base in your default note folder. In my case, it's the note lab. I don't want to do that. So in my previous video, I explained that I have a directory called bases and I create my new bases in here to keep them organized. So I'm going to select the Metabind button new base. Then I'm going to choose my spaces bases folder. So that creates a new base inside my bases folder. And I'm going to give it a name. This one will be system engineer wiki. So now I have a new base called system engineer wiki inside of my bases folder. So I'm going to create a filter to show this system engineer wiki folder. So we'll come up to filter and we're going to select folder contains and then we're going to put in the name of our folder which is three spaces forward slash system engineer wiki. I'll hit enter and now you can see all the notes inside of the system engineer wiki which there are 67 and we can verify that up the top here where it says 67 results. So the next step will be to add some columns. So we'll come up to properties and I'm going to start with date added. So you can see I've got a few date added missing inside of my YAML properties. So what I can do is I can either fill in the gaps if I want to keep everything organized or I could just create a formula for date added and I could make this one date parentheses file dot C time close parentheses dot format parentheses again and then put in the format which will be year month day close parentheses so that will fill in the blanks. Now the problem with creation time is it's the creation time of the file not necessarily the note so sometimes there can be a mismatch so just be mindful of that it might be better to just keep the original YAML property date added. So I'll take out the formula and we'll stick with the YAML property. Now we might want to do the same for date modified. Now date modified is mostly empty so I could probably use a formula for date modified. Now I'm going to use the same syntax again so I'll just copy and paste it to save time. So it'll be date parentheses file dot m time instead of c time. We're just going to put that one over here. So we'll get rid of the 
YAML property date modified. I might put date added and date modified there. So the next column will be a summary of what the note is about. So we'll just put in summary. We've got a few missing, but that's okay. So that's going to be my base system engineer wiki base. So I'll just rename the table up here by selecting the two arrows, type in system engineer wiki. So that's going to be the parent view. So now we can go and create the AWS view. So to do that, we'll just click the arrow, duplicate the view. And then we're going to call this one AWS. And we'll come over to our filter and we need to change where the filter is pointing. So this one is Amazon Web Services. Hit enter. And that's going to filter down to our four files inside of the Amazon Web Services folder. Now we might have a associated tag with that. So if I just come in and open one of those notes, you can see I'm using AWS on this one. This one here, I'm using my sysadmin AWS. So I like to use these tags here. So we'll use that one as an additional filter for tags. And you can add multiples if you want and see how it's disappeared because we've got all the following are true. So we'll just change that to any. So then if it's in that folder or it's got that tag, it'll still show. And if you want to add more filters for just AWS or any other extra tags, you can. So now we can move down to our next one, which is Home Lab. So just duplicate the view again, call this one Home Lab, and then change our filter, change this to Home Lab, change this one to Home Lab, and we'll also change this one to Home Lab. So now we have all our Home Lab notes. So we've got 18. We can verify that up the top there. So the next one is our Intune. So we will come down, duplicate our view, put in Intune, come over to our filter, type in Intune, copy, paste, paste. Now we have our two Intune notes and we can verify that by two. So you get the idea, you can just keep going down until you've created them all. So we'll just use those three examples on our dashboard now. So we'll head over to the dashboard. I'm gonna to go to AWS first. Actually, we'll go to Home Lab first because it's first in the list here. And then we wanna put our base underneath where it says base here. So to do that, we just put exclamation mark, double square brackets, then we select our system engineer wiki base. Now we can actually target the home lab view by putting a pound and then it's going to give us an option to choose another view. So we'll choose home lab and now we have our home lab showing under our view and if you wanted to hide that by default you can so you can still do a search and see your full data view directory or you can just expand it and have it showing ready to go and hopefully when they add a search feature and also a filter um, toggle then we can control this a lot better but for now this is how I'm using this hybrid setup. So we'll go back to the system engineer wiki. We'll do the next one, which is AWS. So we can just put in our toothpaste then exclamation mark, choose our system engineer wiki base, select down pound, choose AWS. So now we have our AWS base. Same again, we can hide by default or keep it shown. And the last one that we'll show as an example is our Intune and it'll be the same for this one two pounds base, exclamation mark, double square brackets, select system engineer wiki base, pound, then in tune and select in tune. So just go through and do each section of your knowledge wiki or system engineer wiki, whatever you've called it. And once you've done that, you can optionally add a button. So you can come back to your dashboard here and you could add another button to link to that base if you wanted to. So I'll show how I do that. I just hit the source view here. I just copy the Metabind button, paste it in, give it a new name. So this one might be SysWiki Base. And then I take my embed here. So I just copy that. Control O, paste, hit the middle mouse button, go into the source view. And then I need to create a new button for here. So to do that, I just right click Metabind button. So I'm going to call this one System Engineer Wiki. So I'll just go Windows key full stop, use a Wi-Fi signal there. Need to put the name of the ID, which I've used here. So it's this wiki base. It's going to be hidden so I don't show it twice. And then I want to open. 
I'm going to add action and we're just going to leave it blank for a second and I don't want to open it in a new tab so I'll turn that off and I'll insert that. I just like to put quotations around my ID and then I need to get my base link so I'm going to expand and right click and then copy the obsidian URL. I'm just going to paste that in as my link here and then when I close that and come back to my dashboard. It will say button ID not found. So I just need to go back and go forward. Now I have my system engineer wiki. So we will click that one and that will open up my system engineer wiki base. Now, if you find you're getting confused with that, then you can give it a new name by just coming in, copy, open, open your button and just name it to system engineer wiki base or whatever you want to name it. And then when you reload that page, it'll say system engineer wiki base. And you could add that button throughout your wiki if you wanted to. So once you've got the button, you just copy, come into the next section, go into your source view, paste the new button because it's already in here in this embed. It will say not found, but then it will show once you reload the page and you can go to your base if you want to have a look at it that way. So I hope this video has been helpful. Just a quick one to go over how I'm using a hybrid base and data view setup inside of my system engineer wiki. For everyone that has purchased the Obsidian Knowledge Wiki Pro, I've gone ahead and included a wiki base in this vault. So you'll notice on the left hand side now under bases, you will have a basis directory, then you will have a knowledge wiki base. And then inside there, you have all your views for your knowledge wiki. And then over on the dashboard for the knowledge wiki, we'll have a link back to the base as well as a base down the bottom. And inside each section, I've included a base at the top to complete a hybrid view for this knowledge wiki pro. I hope you enjoyed this hybrid Obsidian Bases and Data View setup. Since Bases evolves weekly and new features are constantly being added, subscribe for the latest tutorials and let me know in the comments which video you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.